What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. I expect today's subject to be a little bit different and longer than what I usually do. So what I want you to do is go ahead and grab yourself a drink, maybe some snacks, sit back, relax, and enjoy the content. If you're owner of an AMD FX processor, you've probably heard things such as, why did you buy it? It's a terrible processor. Why didn't you get an i3 instead, etc., etc. So why exactly were FX processors hated so much? For that, we're going to need to go a little back to the Athlon 64 FX days. Dave Gardner! We've just routed a bullet train directly to your office. It'll be here in 20 seconds unless you pick the PC that'll reroute the train in time. Will you choose the PC with Intel Pentium 3 or the one with the new AMD Athlon processor? Many people don't know there's a faster PC processor than Pentium 3 at any clock speed. The new AMD Athlon processor. Now you chose wrong, day. Too bad you didn't know about the new AMD Athlon processor. <laughs> You see, back in the early to mid-2000s, the Athlon FX series CPUs were the best high-performance desktop processors available on the market. And so the announcement of Bulldozer was a huge deal not only for a lot of people, but also for AMD themselves, because everyone believed that with the return of the FX moniker, AMD is going to make a huge comeback. Athlon CPUs at the time easily dominated every Intel processor at almost any given price point, whether it was a gaming or a productivity task. And the most exciting part of it was that they did it at a much lower clock speed while also consuming less power. Intel's release of Core 2 Duo processors though in mid-2006 changed everything and AMD was no longer the king. The Core 2 Duo CPUs were so successful that even the cheapest CPU from the lineup wasn't that far behind, in some cases even outperformed AMD's fastest and the most expensive FX processor available at the time. Simply put, CPUs that were once the best on the market and dominated Intel's best of the best for over three years became obsolete literally overnight. The next few years weren't so exciting from the red team. Only almost a year and a half after the release of Intel's Core 2 Duo CPUs, AMD finally responded with their first generation of Phenom processors, although with slightly lower clock speeds than what was initially promised. Compared to their previous K8 architecture, which was the Athlon 64 FX we talked about, Phenom was a decent upgrade, but unfortunately it didn't help AMD regain the performance crown. Intel's mid-range quad-core Q6600 still wasn't that far, in some cases even beat AMD's similarly priced top-of-the-line Phenom X4 9950 processor, although it is worth mentioning that Phenom did fine in the mid-range as well as low-end market segments. AMD also announced the Bulldozer architecture at around this time and claimed that it's going to be the best performing CPU ever. Yikes. In December of 2008, AMD released the second generation of quad-core Phenom processors that were actually a decent step up compared to first gen and performed competitively for their price, although there was still nothing for AMD to offer when it comes to high-end, which Intel has been dominating for almost three years. Later, in mid-2010, AMD released their first ever 6-core Phenom processors that also did great for their price, yet still it wasn't enough to compete with Intel's top-of-the-line i7-980X. AMD was slowly catching up though and getting more competitive with every new release, which brought hopes to many PC enthusiasts about the upcoming bulldozer architecture that AMD has been praising since their first announcement back in 2007. AMD FX CPUs, the epic returns. Introducing the AMD FX 8-core processor, the world's first 8-core desktop processor, unlocked out of the box. With an extra burst of speed when you need it most, with AMD Turbo Core technology. Months pass by and it's already 2011. 
Everyone is waiting for the 8 core bulldozer processors that AMD has been hyping for the last few months, and enthusiasts expect FX to dominate the market again like it did back in the mid 2000s. People are obviously also excited for Intel's upcoming Sandy Bridge architecture and curious how these products from both sides are going to stack up. There was no option for AMD to fail. It's been over 5 years since AMD was the performance king and after all this time and promises, FX just had to deliver and bring back the performance crown. As AMD lifts the embargo, everyone uploads videos and posts articles talking about how disappointing AMD's bulldozer architecture actually is. Not only was FX performing much worse compared to Sandy Bridge, in most cases it couldn't even outperform the previous generation Phenom 2 CPUs despite having higher clock speeds. In fact, it was so bad that you had to overclock Bulldozer nearly a whole gigahertz higher to be on par with second gen Phenom processors in terms of single threaded performance. Power consumption was also terrible. The FX 8150 consumed nearly twice as much power compared to Intel's Sandy Bridge i7 processor, while also performing noticeably worse. So you may be thinking, what happened? How could AMD praise Bulldozer, telling people that it's going to be the best performing CPU ever, and fail so badly at the same time? Unfortunately, it all boils down to a few reasons. As you most likely know, one of them is the chip design itself. The shared resources of a bulldozer core impacted performance a lot, which by the way resulted in confusion of whether the FX processors really had the amount of cores AMD claimed them to have, which they did. A single bulldozer module has a total of two cores, meaning that the FX 8150 consisted of four modules, making it an eight core processor. Although the shared resources between those cores, such as the floating point unit, resulted in lower performance numbers than what you would achieve with an eight core processor without those shared parts. That's also the reason why software such as Cinebench R15 sees an FX8350 as a 4-core CPU with 8 threads, the FX6300 as a 3-core CPU with 6 threads, and the FX4300 as a dual-core CPU with 4 threads. In this case, we didn't see as much of an improvement as we would have liked, but remember guys, bulldozer cores were not full cores in the same way that Tubin cores were, okay? So this Bulldozer architecture was also designed to reach high frequencies, but unfortunately by doing so, AMD had to make an IPC trade-off, which as we know, AMD decided to go for, yet still, Bulldozer didn't overclock any better than Sandy Bridge processors. Essentially, the problem was that the design approach of the chip and the low IPC on top of it made an 8-core FX processor perform around the same, if not slightly worse, in multi-threaded tasks than a quad-core Sandy Bridge i7 with hyper-threading, while an 8-core CPU should at least be performing roughly 40-50% to faster compared to 4 cores and 8 threads, of course, given both CPUs have the same IPC. A good example would be comparing an i7-7700K to an i7-9700K, both at the same frequency, and as we can see, there is a 52% increase over the 7700K. Simply put, the IPC disadvantage of around 40% that Bulldozer had compared to Sandy Bridge and the not-so-good design of the chip were the reason of those 8 Bulldozer cores not being as powerful, resulting in lower performance numbers as well as confusion amongst people as to whether or not AMD was telling the truth about the core count of Bulldozer CPUs. There are so many things that can be said about the bulldozer architecture, but for now, I hope that this somewhat short and simple explanation clears some things out. Another reason why bulldozer was hated so much is because of the unnecessary hype and advertising. Naming their bulldozer CPUs as FX was a very bad idea, as like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, the Athlon 64 FX CPUs were the best you could get at the time, which got people excited even more. AMD also was mocking Intel with comics, saying the FX is coming back, which also was another bad move from AMD, especially knowing that bulldozer FX processors wouldn't be as good as Athlon 64 FX CPUs were back in the mid-2000s. 
So at the end of the day, would I recommend this CPU to AMD folks? I don't know. My tech was pretty really disappointed actually because of the hype, like I said earlier in the video. If AMD would have marketed this a little bit better, they would have a lot more people that were 100% behind this because the CPU, it's really not that bad of a CPU. And finally, I feel like the most important reason why Bulldozer was such a failure is the delay. You see, AMD was planning to release Bulldozer in 2009. And if they did, then the FX CPUs wouldn't get as much backlash as they did. The FX8150 would easily compete with the i7-920 and wouldn't even be that far behind the i7-980X while being much cheaper. But unfortunately, it seems like AMD had no other choice but to delay Bulldozer and release it in 2011. In September of 2012, AMD released the second generation of Bulldozer codenamed Piledriver, which was a decent improvement over the first gen, and it is worth mentioning that they were sold quite well. Piledriver CPUs consumed slightly less power and now had higher frequencies, while also being priced lower compared to Bulldozer, which definitely was a good move by AMD, because now that the FX8350 was priced similarly to an i5-2500K, consumers with a limited budget had a choice to either go for the superior single-core performance of the Sandy Bridge or the multi-core performance of an i7 for nearly half the price. As you most likely know, I decided to go for the latter, and here I am, still using my FX8350, overclocked to 4.6 GHz, and I'm definitely not disappointed with the choice I've made in 2013. So there you have it. These are pretty much the main reasons why Bulldozer received so much hate, and I'm really happy that AMD has learned from their mistakes. The release of Ryzen wasn't hyped as much, and AMD finally put out something much more competitive than they've been able in the past 10 plus years. And who knows, maybe the release of Zen 2 will finally help AMD